We're going to just, uh, jump straight into it, and this is uh, we we'll start with weatherproofing. So the performance requirements under the National Construction Code. National Construction Code of Australia 2019 sets out the number of criteria to be met in relation to metal roofing. Performance requires requirements, uh, part 2.1 of the structure and part 2.2 damp and weatherproofing. Basically, at the end of the day, the roof just cannot leak. So under part 2.2.2, uh, roof and external walls, including openings and windows and doors, must prevent the penetration of water that could cause unhealthy or dangerous conditions and undue dampness or deterioration of building elements. Now that dampness may include condensation and condensation can easily form underneath the metal roof when there's more than 12 degree of temperature change. The limitations of metal roofing. Metal roofing's limitations are limited when it, can be, it cannot be installed for less than one degree pitch and it is quite heavily affected by expansion and contraction. This is one of the most greatest failures that we see um, with water ingress is from expansion and contraction. Its benefits, it's very durable in benign conditions. It has a 20 year warranty against flake and peel on colour bond sheeting. And it's typically 36 year warranty from corrosion to perforation. There's some uh, some examples here is of some different products. We have some um, metallic colour bond on the left hand on the wall cladding there, some sprung curve high tensile sheeting. At the rear of the property, we have uh, some, um, some custom orb there falling towards the, 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 the front, but it's also laid over a belt type structure. So the, the product um, is very um, susceptible for very interesting shapes and designs. Internally, we have some, um, some curved high tensile sheeting, so that curves and then laps onto some um, curved um, blue orb sheeting and then, um, and then back onto curved high tensile sheeting again, creating a uh, massive wave effect inside the building. Outside, under that same front veranda, once again, the curved ceiling in a bell shape uh, falls forward and replicating the shape of the roof. On top of the main roof, we've got two high tensile curved colour bond sheeting falling into a, a box gutter, which is well falling to the, the uh, rainwater head. The environmental effects. This chart shows the areas where we can use different types of uh, materials and the type of materials that are available. Firstly, we have zinc alum steel, which is the, uh, the base um, product. Then we have colour bond steel. Colour bond is more of an aesthetic finish. We also have a, a cool max steel. Cool max steel is, um, is, very, uh, is designed to, um, to prevent uh, the solar absorbance. So, and that um, uh, prevents the, um, the heat basically passing through the product. So we use that when, we, when we've got a product um, for things like um, installing a roof on a chocolate factory where it's very, very important to, to keep the heat down inside the product. Um, it's also used in um, Part J compliance jobs. Um, then we have uh, metallic steel that's more of an aesthetic product. Um, used um, just purely for aesthetics. We also have our Colour Bond Ultra Steel, which is we use in our, our um, more our severe marine environments. And then we have our Colour Bond Stainless, or our very, um, very severe marine environments. This chart also uh, now tells us um, the same as our roofing materials, but for walling. So this gives us our the recommended walling profiles and how far from the marine environment we can install those products. This is a very useful chart. Um, this is the uh, environmental effects for dissimilar metals. Okay, so this is the acceptability of drainage from an upper surface onto a lower metal surface. So this is not direct contact, this is just pure water runoff. 
A good example of this is a, um, a copper pipe I saw in a shopping centre where the copper was uh, sagging slightly between the brackets. It was a gas line, but the condensation was running off the sagging copper pipe and was dripping onto the metal roof and created a ball of rust under the copper point at every point. That roof required 10,000 square metres of being replaced. Uh, um, it could quite easily be been um, changed just by um, following this simple chart. This one is the uh, acceptability of direct contact between metals. So this chart is to be used when absolute direct contact. So it may look all very complicated there, but with what we're talking about here is that electricians galvanise clip, um, the uh, different types of screws, um, nuts, bolts, um, all different types of products. When we've got um, mechanical plant on roofs, hot water services, solar systems, all manufactured from different types of materials, um, just check to make sure that you have the acceptability correct and follow this chart. The envir environmental effects of um, um, contaminants from uh, air conditioning lines. This is the, one of the most uh, corrosive that I've seen on metal roofs. The copper that's uh, saturated water that comes out of the condensate lines is very, very corrosive to metal roofs. Um, copper saturated water uh, has damaged this box gutter. Uh, I've had box gutters collapse inside buildings in less than four years, so it is very, very corrosive. The easiest way to deal with that is to um, uh, extend that, uh, those condensate lines to down inside a PVC downpipe or when siphonic drainage or other types of um, drainage is allowed then that can go to a tonne dish um, and then be piped to stormwater. Rainfall intensities and water carrying capacity. It's very important that, the, um, that you check that to make sure that the roof is capable for its intended use. The first thing we need to know is what the rainfall intensity is for your local area. In Brisbane here, we have a rainfall intensity of 305. It used to be 333, but it just got de de decreased some time ago. Uh, so once we, uh, we know the rainfall intensity for the area, we need to um, check the overall roof run. Um, once we know the overall roof run, we can look at the, uh, the roof profile and from this simple chart it tells us therefore the roof pitch we need on that roof profile to ensure that uh, the correct um, uh, uh, capability has been achieved. So it's not quite that easy though. We have the, um, this chart explains to us what happens when we have water concentration. So when we have a penetration in the roof, we harvest the water at the top of the penetration and that uh, therefore creates a water concentration down the side of the penetration and sometimes this can exceed the, uh, the capacity of the roof sheet. So what we've got here is those white spaces there, they're the individual pans of every roof sheet and the black lines are the ribs. So we, uh, we collect a couple of white pans together and then it adds up and we create water concentration. So we need to, get, to double check our water concentration and then go back to our previous chart and make sure that we haven't exceeded the capacity of the sheet. When we are penetrating a, um, a roof, very small penetrations like we see in residential, maybe some vent pipes, a sewer vent um, that's penetrating a roof, we have to, uh, in, in all circumstances, we try and avoid that passing through a lap of a sheet. So the way the lap of a sheet works is that the overlap hugs the underlap for aesthetics. Um, water then is sucked up inside the lap and then travels down inside the lap all the way to the eaves gutter or box gutter. So if we penetrate that lap, then we can seal that deck tight down to the roof as well as we like, but the water that's already inside the lap will leak inside the building. So we always make sure that the penetration doesn't go through the lap and goes through a normal rib. If we cut it through the pan of the sheet, then, we're going to, then I'm going to block the whole pan and that will cause um, corrosion and we call that ponding or immersion as Blue Scope calls it. Uh, what we've got on these trapezoidal roof profiles that's shown there, uh, down at the gutter line there's a small little, um, the underlap must be localised trimmed off 
otherwise um, that can prevent drawback. And the lower ends of the sheets are always turned down and the upper ends are always turned up. If the penetration that passes through the pan of the sheet blocks the whole pan, then uh, a tray flashing method is normally used. So this tray flashing method, it works very well and it's just extended all the way to the apex. It, like all, all things, it has its limitations. The limitations of the tray flashings are that uh, it's just a flat tray and so therefore when the water that runs down the tray, it floods the screws and the neoprene washer on the, the screw becomes compromised. So a screw that normally passes through a rib, um, it gets wet when it rains but it doesn't become flooded. When, a, uh, when the water runs down a tray, the screws become flooded and the screws aren't at that capacity to, uh, to be handled flooding. So that's easily resolved. We install aluminium bonnet washers underneath their screws when we uh, are using tray flashings and that solves that. So very good tip there. When every time you're using a tray flashing, use aluminium bonnet washers under your head of your screws. You may need to extend the length of your screw by up to 10 millimetres in doing so. Water carrying capacity over capacity due to penetrations. So we talk about the, uh, I spoke previously about the capability of roof sheeting and with the water concentration. So a couple of penetrations here. These are just um, examples of uh, penetrations that have been designed so they're not to create water concentration on the adjoining roof sheet. So the water is actually harvested. It's channeled around the penetration and then using baffle flashings, it's, it's evenly distributed like a downpipe spreader and spreads the water back onto the sheet without, um, as you can see on that bottom picture there, the water's pouring off evenly off the sheet and there's no water concentration.